Now, I've just read a couple of papers that um, basically are quite disconcerting, so I'm going to bring them to you now. And I'm going to put the links uh, below in the description so you can analyse them for yourself. Now, the first one is from the Journal of the American Medical Association, and it's uh, published on the 17th of March. So this is data that's taken up to round about that time, the 17th of March. Now, this is a coronavirus disease, COVID-19, uh, in Italy. So this is data from Italy, because we've been looking at the Italian data with some consternation now for some time, and, and this is a bit of a breakdown on that data. Now, these were the number of cases here, the people that actually became infected. So uh, men were outnumbering women, and the difference there is statistically significant. So there may be something going on here, the, the ratio between male and female, uh, and the likelihood of contracting this condition. Some data now are showing that men probably get infected more frequently than women. Now, age of the people that were infected with the condition. Now, it was a pretty crude breakdown, 0 to 18 years, 19 to 50 years, 51 to 70 years and over 70. But these were the figures. Now, these again, these are the people that got infected, that got the disease. So of all those that were infected, 1.2% were between the ages of zero and 18 years. Of all those that got infected, 24% were between the ages of 19 and 50 years. So good to see that young people aren't getting the condition so much there and children aren't getting it so much. Having said that, there is data that shows that young people do get this disease. It's just less common from this data and, and from the Chinese data as well. So uh, 51 to 70 years of age comprised 37.3% of the people that contracted the condition. And those over the age of 70, 37%. So this, this seems to be showing that roughly over the age of about 50, your chances of getting the disease don't go up tremendously. The number of cases in that age group indicate that. Um, now, this is not about the complications, because we'll, as we'll see, the complications is greater with increasing age. So they were the people that actually got it. Now, of the people that got it, how severe was the condition? And this is the breakdown of that. So um, asymptomatic, without symptoms, 6.7% of people that got the infection, that were diagnosed with the infection, didn't get any symptoms. So that's that's good. But it's bad because of these these people, of course, could be super spreaders and go around spreading it to many other people because they don't know they've got it. Unspecified, that means sort of vague symptoms. They just didn't feel very well for a while. 10.6%. Uh, Few symptoms, 6.7%. Mild symptoms, 46.1%. And altogether, if we take these no symptoms, unspecified, few symptoms and mild symptoms, that gives us a disappointingly low number of 70%. Uh, so mild disease, or even milder than mild, if you like, mild or, or these categories here, 70%. Uh, now, th this is incredibly disappointing. We had hoped this was over 80%, but that's not what the Italian data has shown in the Italian situation. Now, this doesn't mean to say this is going to be universal in your country, but this is, this is the data from Italy. Now, severe cases. Now, frustratingly, the paper doesn't define severe and critical. But critical is normally taken that these people need uh, intensive care unit support in order to survive. And this means that these patients feel pretty poorly for a period of time and may need a degree of medical intervention, although that isn't specified, unfortunately, in this paper. So we're not quite sure the precise meanings of severe and critical from this paper. But if we take the number that are critical, these are the 5% here are only going to survive with significant, very significant medical input. Now, in Italy, many people got that support. In poorer countries of the world, people aren't going to get that support. 
So in poorer areas where there's no medical support, maybe some of those who were severe might have uh, potential complications that could lead to death. And the critical ones could potentially, well, probably all die without, without uh, intensive support. So the potential here for um, the case fatality rate in poorer parts of the world is, is actually disturbing to, to think about. Now, moving on to the case fatality rates. Now, you probably remember that the case fatality rate or the case fatality ratio is essentially the percentage of people that die uh, compared to the total number that get infected. So if the case fatality rate is 1%, that means that 1% of people that get the infection die from the infection. And this is the Italian data up to the time this paper was uh, submitted. So 0 to 9, no deaths, therefore 0% case fatality ratio. So that's, that's good to see. 10 to 19, again, no deaths, therefore 0% case fatality ratio. 20 to 29, no deaths, therefore 0% case fatality ratio. Now, 30 to 39, there was four deaths in the total sample, and that equated to a death rate of 0.3% of the people that got the infection. 40 to 49, there was 10 people, 10 deaths, and that represented 0.4% of people in that age group that got the infection. So the people that were 40 to 49 in Italy, 0.4 of them died. In other words, four in a thousand cases died. 50 to 59 year old age group, 1% um, died. 60 to 69 year old age group, 3.5% died. 70 to 79, 12.5%. So of 100 people that got the COVID-19 infection, who were aged 70 to 79, 12.5 of them died, 12.5%. And then 80 to 89, we see it goes up even more. And uh, 80 to 98, going up to 22.7%. And the total number of deaths in this sample up to the submission of this paper was that. And that gives a very high overall 7.2% death rate. So total number of deaths recorded up to the submission of the paper, 7.2% death rate. Now, we have looked at similar data from China before, so it's interesting to compare these two. So in China, uh, likewise, there was 0% in that age group. And 0%, uh, not, no, no, in, that, in 10 to 19 in China, there was 0.2% death rate, sorry. So in China the death rate in the nine, 10 to 19 year old age group was higher than in Italy. Now the 20 to 29, again in China it was 0 0.2. So again, higher in China than in Italy in that, in that uh, age group. 30 to 39, in China that was 0 0.2. So quite similar. So in Italy, three, 0 0.3, uh, percent died in that age group and in China it was 0.2 percent died in that age group. Now 40 to 49 the figures were exactly the same. So in China 0.4 percent, four in a thousand of those aged 40 to 49 that got the infection died the same as the Italian figure. Now the 50 to 59 was 1.3 in China so again, reasonably similar there. The 60 to 69 in China was 3.6. So again, really quite, uh, re 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 really quite similar figures in Italy and China. The 70 to 79 in China was 8%. So more people in the 70 to 79 age group who got the infection in Italy died compared to those in China. That was the number in the sample in Italy that died, representing 12.5% of the total number that got the infection. 
Now the 80 to 89 in China was 14.8. So we see the death rate in Italy in this older age group was uh, higher. And uh, that, that was all the, all the data that we had from, uh, from China. China actually just gave data for over, over eight as it didn't break it down. So basically we're seeing that the Italian data fairly strongly agrees with the Chinese data that risk of death, the case fatality ratio in people who get this infection increases with, with increasing age. That's consistent between the Italian and the Chinese data. But it does show that in China, some people between the age of 10 and 19 died, whereas in Italy they didn't. Likewise, for the 20 to 29, a few died in China, 0.2% and none in Italy. But this does show that there is cases in younger people as well. So it's not saying younger people don't get this disease well we know they get it but it's not saying that they don't die of this disease they just die much less frequently than uh, older people so that's some quite interesting data from Italy now the second paper that's concerned me this evening is from the uh, Lancet uh, 12th of March prestigious uh, British medical journal and this is real estimates of mortality following COVID-19 infection. So again, it's about case fatality rates. Now, this uh, research letter in The Lancet uh, said that they assumed an incubation period of up to 14 days, which is, is about right. We know there can be very, very occasional cases that are longer than 18 days, but not uh, 14 days, but not many. So incubation period is typically five or six days, but can be up to a maximum of 14, normally not more. Now, the median time from onset of symptoms to intensive care admission has been around 10 days. And this is from uh, World Health Organization data on all the cases that are collected data for. So it's showing that people tend to deteriorate if they're going to deteriorate in the second week after the onset of symptoms. World Health Organization data again. Um, the time interval between symptom onset and death is typically two to eight weeks. So symptom onset to uh, intensive care admission, 10 days. Symptom onset to death, two weeks and upwards. Now, of course, the thing is about the death rates is in an epidemic, the Death rates are people that have had the infection, as we've seen, for uh, two or more weeks. So the death rates today, compared to the number of cases 14 days ago, will give us a more accurate picture. So what we want to know is how many people die per number of people that are infected, or number of people that have symptoms in this case. And because the death is delayed then it's more accurate to look at the cases 14 days ago. And that's what these authors did. So they took the death rate on any given day. And then they compared that to the number of cases 14 days ago. Because, of course, if the number of cases are increasing all the time, then there's going to be more cases on today, which is going to give you uh, an artificially low death rate. So that's what they did. It's quite clever, really. So they took the number of cases on any one day, the number of deaths on any one day, and compared that to the number of cases 14 days ago. And this is based on WHO data, uh, cumulative numbers of deaths up to uh, March the 1st, 2020. So the World Health Organization have collected as much data as they can from China and other countries, and this is what they came up with. Now, this is what concerned me. When these authors took the death rate, the case fatality rate or the case fatality ratio for the people that died on one day compared to the number of cases 14 days ago. So these are the people that had the disease 14 days ago that have gone on to die 14 days later. They found the overall case fatality rate was between 5.5 and 5.9. 
estimating it to be 5.7%. Now, this is way, way higher than my chief medical officer is saying. But this is a logical way to analyse these data because you're taking the deaths now from people that had the disease 14 days ago. And we know that the death is delayed by 14 days. So it makes perfect sense. And uh, the overall case fatality ratio is 5.7%. Is so that is alarmingly high. Um, let's hope there's something wrong here. But if there is, I don't quite see what it is at the moment. But uh, do read the papers for yourself. Uh, estimates will be increased if a longer delay between onset of illness and death is considered. So in other words, if this was three or four weeks, more people will go on to die. So that could potentially have been higher. Because not everyone would die after two weeks. Some people would die after three weeks or four weeks or five weeks. So the number of deaths would go on increasing. And these authors in The Lancet conclude these findings show that the current figures might underestimate the potential threat of COVID-19 in symptomatic patients. In other words, this, this research paper is indicating the death rate may be higher than was previously thought, with the probability of death increasing with increasing age, but not unheard of in uh, younger adults.